Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Amit. As promised in my last video that I would be doing a video on invisible reCAPTCHA. So here I am with the video on how do we integrate the new invisible reCAPTCHA in your site real quick. So without wasting much time, let's get started. With Google introducing the newer version of reCAPTCHA which is called as invisible reCAPTCHA, ticking the I am not a robot checkbox on an internet form may soon become a thing of the past. Very recently, Google officially announced its invisible reCAPTCHA service, which is able to differentiate humans from bots without an additional input from users. This is an enhancement over the traditional or legacy CAPTCHAs and earlier reCAPTCHAs. Since it offers greater ease of use to validate users, according to Google, the new technology uses machine learning and an improved risk analysis engine to analyze the web browsing behavior. The user will only need to solve a CAPTCHA if their browsing patterns are in some way suspicious. CAPTCHAs also do a service for Google as well. So every time a CAPTCHA is solved, it enhances Google's machine learning database by digitizing and transcribing images and text. Google applies this information to its efforts transcribing books and improving maps. So now coming back to the technicality of invisible reCAPTCHA. Invisible reCAPTCHA does not require the user to click on a checkbox. Instead, it is invoked directly when the user clicks on an existing button on your site or it also can be invoked via an external JavaScript API call. The integration requires a JavaScript callback when a reCAPTCHA verification is complete. By default, only the most suspicious traffic will be promoted to solve a CAPTCHA. To alter this behavior, edit your security settings under the advanced settings. Let us get started to see how we actually integrate the invisible reCAPTCHA into your website, blog or an application. So this is the admin panel of the reCAPTCHA list. So basically this is how it looks. I mean, we, here we can manage the entire list of our reCAPTCHA keys, whatever we have registered for. So this is a, this is, this is where we register it for a new site. So in order to register, so we need to give a label for, uh, you know, registration. So this is the, I mean, it will be uniquely identified over here. So this is, uh, I'll just type it as reCAPTCHA site. So we need to choose the type of the reCAPTCHA that we need, we are intended to integrate with. The reCAPTCHA V2 is a typical legacy reCAPTCHA wherein, you know, it, it shows, it shows a tick box of I'm not a robot, but we are now mainly concerned with the invisible reCAPTCHA. So we'll click on this. So here we need to give a domain name. So I have a domain, I mean, I have a virtual host created. So I'll be giving that over here since I'm testing on a local host. So this is a reCAPTCHA.local and you also need to accept the reCAPTCHA terms of service. So, and you need to register. So once you click on register, uh, whatever the site you have added, they comes up and they shows up over here in this particular table. So if you just click on that, you know, here is a set of keys you can, you know, configure as. So this is a site key and this is a secret key. So let us just quickly, you know, run through the demo of the simple form that I have just created. So this is the reCAPTCHA.local. This is a simple form with a sim single input box, which is name. So that is a required field. So I'll refresh the page. So once I refresh, if you note that in the console box, uh, XHR request is triggered. So I mean, which is API to reload. So basically I, this initializes the reCAPTCHA, the invisible reCAPTCHA. So if I submit, so it say it throws an error. I mean, it, it you know, uh, it validates and it accepts the input from the user. So I'll click my name here. So then I do a submit. So what did uh, what it did? 
so internally it verified if I'm a valid user or not so if you see so this is on success you know um, I have just added a alert box so if you see here another request goes whenever I click the submit so it, it is user verify so internally it verified whenever I clicked on a submit internally it verified that I'm whether I am a valid user or not so in order to look at how does it look for an unverified user I mean say if, if my um, you know browser uh, behavior is somewhat suspicious so what I do is I'm not sure whether it works or not because you know I, I'll try to uh, reproduce it I just opened up an incognito uh, window so let me just see if I get that particular uh, captcha to solve here no it didn't so basically uh, you know it, it didn't so it automatically verified so you can see here this is the request that went through it's user verify so as I said it, it's based on uh, machine learning techniques so uh, this is how it is uh, let me just open the code this is how the code looks like so this is a form so I have included a google script which is recapture slash api.js so this is the form and you know I have a simple input so this is a site key of my registered site so this is where you have to specify the data callback so this data callback is defined over here so once you are verified this particular on submit will be called so basically this on submit uh, can you know in a typical practical examples you know say uh, triggering a contact form you know you can save the data over here so say if you have a uh, a practical contact form with name I, uh, name address and you know whatever the comments so if, if it has three fields so what it does is basically so on load uh, we need to initialize the validate I mean on click we need to initialize the validate method for on click of submit and uh, in submit you just verify and if, if the user has entered all the fields then it goes to the else part and here it does a recaptcha execute so here is where it checks for whether it's a valid human or it's a bot so if this is succeeded if this gets succeeded so now the on submit is triggered so this is how the control flows across so in on submit you know all your uh, code related to you know making an ajax call uh, to the server so all such stuffs can be handled so let me just quickly once again run you through the clo uh, the code uh, walk through so this is the input field we need to specify the uh, uh, on submit i mean data callback as data callback method so, the, so the, this is a, this is how it is identified whether it's a invisible or not so you need to say in data size is invisible so once the page gets loaded so once this gets loaded what happens is that on load is triggered and on load what you're supposed what you're doing is you're just uh, you know initializing the uh, the on click event for the submit button so this is the on click event that is in getting initialized so uh, and once you you submit the form so the on, on click gets triggered so if you have entered all the uh, you know say if you so if this is the required so if you have you know entered all the required fields uh, the uh, the recapture dot execute method is you know is triggered so once this is triggered and once you are verified so it goes I mean the callback then returns to the on submit function so this is the on submit function so in this particular function you can you know define all your um, say ajax calls to the server or you know rest calls yeah and this is pretty much it it's uh, simple and silly so uh, let me know in the comment section below if you face any kind of issues while integrating it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for my next video. Thanks a lot.